Coming up in this Wrestle Talk news, a top WWE act broken up, Goldberg returning, my review of last night's Raw, and more. Smash that subscribe button, yo, and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news. Support Wrestle Talk! After only signing with WWE at the start of last year, Karrion Cross and Scarlett Bordeaux have already debuted in NXT, won the top title, held it for the shortest reign in history at just four days, vacated it due to injury, took a few months off, returned, and won it back in April. He most recently defended it against four of the top names in the promotion, beating Pete Dunne, Carlo Riley, Johnny Gargano, and Adam Cole at the same time. He's been booked as one of the most dominant champions NXT has ever had. So, in true WWE fashion, he's going straight to the main event of the main roster. As in the show, main event. The one that ironically doesn't have any main eventers on it. It was revealed over the weekend that Cross had a dark match tryout at Friday's Smackdown tapings. Why the NXT champion has to do a main roster tryout is beyond me, that's the point of NXT. And it was then also reported he was backstage at Hell in a Cell. Now Dave Meltzer right, he's impressed everyone so much, he'll be on this week's main event beating Shelton Benjamin. And not just that, it seems his act with real-life girlfriend Scarlett Bordeaux could be broken up. According to Meltzer, Scarlett is getting a tryout of her own as a single star this Friday. This would suggest that WWE are already planning on splitting up Cross and Bordeaux before it even arrives on the main roster. But what about the lip syncing? It's well known Vince McMahon doesn't like manager gimmicks, which is why Paul Heyman always called himself Brock Lesnar's advocate. The main roster is also meant to give NXT several months notice before any call-ups are made, so the promotion has time to adjust plans and write people out. Such advance warnings never seem to happen though, with Ciampa and Gargano famously being called up as a tag team while they were having one of the most intense blood feuds NXT has ever seen. Perhaps the main roster wants Cross as a fresh face for when fans return. What do you think of WWE splitting up Karrion Cross and Scarlett Bordeaux? Let me know in the comments because I'll be replying to people for the first 30 minutes after this video goes live from out of nowhere. But that's not the only cross ruined by the main roster. Cross segue! On last night's Raw, Nikki Cross debuted her new superhero gimmick where she will inspire people with her spirit. The Hurricane. I definitely came up with that joke, not Chopper Pete. I hate you, Chopper Pete! Vince McMahon has always loved this idea, wanting to make AEW's pack a Mighty Mouse character when he came up from NXT, and giving these same types of promos to Ricochet Pew Pew. But according to her real-life husband, NXT's Killian Dane, this was Nikki's idea. She had an idea and saw it brought to life, very excited to see what's next, or who's next. Segway game is on fire! In WWE's latest attempt to reverse their falling ratings, like putting Roman Reigns vs Rey Mysterio on SmackDown and having another Hell in a Cell match on Raw last night, it was also reported a couple of weeks ago that WWE would have a draft this September that would shake up the brands. A draft just two months before Survivor Series. Again, brand warfare. Been here like three weeks. According to Ringside News, a preliminary list of wrestlers who will be part of that draft is circulating backstage, and it included some surprising names. Goldberg, who hasn't been seen since the Royal Rumble, and The Undertaker, who retired last November at Survivor Series. Interestingly, given all the recent reports, Brock Lesnar's name was not on the list. Ringside News are saying that Creative were told there are no plans with Brock, and they're not even in discussions with him. Brock Lesnar return confirmed. Before we get on with the rest of the episode, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to this video's sponsor, Raycon. Go to buyraycon.com forward slash WrestleTalkNews now to get 15% off your order. Apart from Monday Night Raw, a lot of things have changed over the last year. Remote working, wearing masks everywhere, actually washing your hands now. But of all those, the single best change to my life has been wireless earphones. Seriously, I love them, they're amazing, I didn't realise I hate wires so much. And you can't get better value for money than the Raycon Everyday E25 earbuds, which come in a range 
range of colors and patterns, and are super comfortable with a variety of fit options, a 45-day free return policy, and most importantly, you'll be wearing the same earbuds as Snoop Dogg. And I hear he's quite the popular fellow. Now summer's here and you're actually legally allowed to go outside, I cannot recommend Raycons enough. If only so you don't get tangled up in the wires when you have to take a bag off on the train or bus. Six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a noise isolating fit. Wireless headphones are genuinely the biggest level up of my day-to-day -day life over the last year. And I had to pay full price for mine. You can get your own Raycon Everyday E25 earbuds for 15% off by visiting buyraycon.com forward slash WrestleTalk News. The link's in the video description below. Support WrestleTalk, support wireless entertainment, support Raycon. Now it's time for my review of last night's Raw in about five minutes. With Hell in a Cell having lost to itself via roll-up the previous night, Monday's Raw opened focusing on the next pay-per-view, Money in the Bank, announcing five whole qualifying matches for the show. But not before we got some Bobby Lashley celebration action with his sexy sisters. This guy loves his family. The New Day has no time for the incest casting couch genre, however, interrupting them by throwing pancakes and neatly outlining the conflict between their two acts. Lashley surrounds himself with users and hangers on. On. Kofi has positivity. It sets the basis for a much deeper kind of wrestling feud. Not just one based on I don't like you or I want that title, but a clash of philosophies. Bobby not only accepted Kofi's title match challenge for Money in the Bank, but also a match tonight against Xavier Woods in Hell in a Cell. Man, things really got out of hand fast. The first qualifying Money in the Bank match should have been amazing, but was more of just some high spots and then an angle. Ricochet pinned AJ Styles after Styles got distracted by the Viking Raiders brawling with a Moss, who charged through the barricade. This would have been more psychologically effective if a Moss was interfering in the match and the Raiders had come out to stop him. WWE really need to decide whether AJ and a Moss are heels or faces. Well, we released Lana and Asuka's not fighting for a title anymore. Hey, Asuka and Naomi. Your best friends now. They tagged against Eva Marie and Piper Niven, now officially named Dewdrop. Sounds like a Pokemon. Wish she said her name all the time as she walked around the ring. Dewdrop, Dewdrop, Dewdrop. Which saw Marie get rolled up by Naomi when Dewdrop didn't tag in. Seemingly because she doesn't want to be called Dewdrop. Why am I saying Dewdrop so much? I'm a 33 year old man. For the story they're trying to tell, this is way too early to do any kind of Dewdrop defiance. Definitely not Raw General Managers Sonya Deville and or Adam Pearce told off Rhea Ripley for causing a DQ at Hell in a Cell and then booked yet another title match with Charlotte for Money in the Bank. There was some speculation that the pay-per-view was meant to be some kind of double turn for Rhea and Flair. If there was, the double turn was making them both even more unlikable. Because the segment was so good last week, we got a mirror image redo of Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke joshing with Natalia and Tamina. The acting was just as bad. Hey, let's do it like it's 2008. Randy Orton faced John Morrison in a Money in the Bank qualifier. I know how this is going to go. Orton will win his match. Riddle will win his. They'll have to fight in Money in the Bank. That sounds pretty good. But showing just how well WWE are booking this story, they zigged when I expected them to zag. And it was better. Miz interfered, so Riddle chased him round the ring in a race of scooter versus wheelchair. Distracting Randy, causing him to lose to Morrison. Adding an interesting layer of tension to the RK Bro act. Which was brilliantly furthered a few matches later on. In the best match of the night for me, although the main event was also really good, Drew McIntyre took on Riddle in another Money in the Bank qualifier. There was a lot of context going into this match. The RK Bro stuff from earlier, and Drew's desperation at not being able to challenge Bobby for the title. A Money in the Bank briefcase could be a technicality around that. Add in Drew masterfully selling the effects of Hell in a Cell from the night before, because someone's got to. It was as though he was wrestling his own body as much as Riddle. They went through two commercial breaks, putting the contest over like an absolute war. And then Randy appeared on the stage to watch on. It's still not known whether he'd help Riddle or cost him the match out of spite. But Riddle just ended up beating Drew all by himself clean. It sounds counterintuitive, but these losses are really getting me back into Drew's character. Bringing a surprising amount of feels though, Autumn wouldn't fist bump Riddle at the top of the ramp, just having his arms crossed and staring dead ahead. While Riddle heartbreakingly cried, Randy. 
what's wrong? This is such a well-told story. I was concerned they were just going to do another pay-per-view cycle of New Day matches, even though that chapter concluded last Monday, but they smartly moved both acts on to something new. WWE then announced Autumn, McIntyre and AJ for a last chance qualifier next week. Really excited to see how Randy and Drew's stories play into that. Unfortunately, this is a three-hour show and it's hard to make everything good, so WWE wisely just shoved all the crap stuff into the same segment. Turning off my Alexa. <laughs> Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross took on Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler that had so many things wrong with it. Bliss has got new headache-inducing entrance music, she's still doing the supernatural possession nonsense, and she tagged with Nikki, never really addressing their history together. But the most frustrating, likely because it's the newest, is what's happened to Nikki's character. She's a superhero now. It's a difficult situation, because this will undoubtedly get her more screen time. One of the shortcuts to get Vince's attention appears to be humiliate yourself and become another one of his clowns. But the benefit is, he'll give you more stuff to do. Nikki won this match and got in a bunch of offense, a far cry from her winning matches by running away from them just a few weeks ago. But it comes with a bitter taste. The undercard yelled at Adam Pearce about not being in the Money in the Bank qualifiers. Yes, Jeff Hardy is currently the undercard. Riker is taking on Elias in a strap match next week. And the main event saw that random Hell in a Cell match announced under three hours earlier. Hardly the big blood feud blow off the stipulation was invented for, but it's hard to complain when it's this fun. Lashley gave Woods a lot, including a great near fall with a jumping elbow through a table, but all must tap to the hurt lock in the end. This only went 10 minutes and was more about the feud building visual with Kingston. Locking Woods in the cage with Lashley and MVP afterwards, so Kofi had to helplessly watch his friend getting beaten up. If the idea is that Kofi's strength is surrounding himself with positivity, the story should be based around all that positivity being slowly stripped away from him. So well done. You killed Xavier Woods. What did you think of Raw? Let me know in the comments down below and vote in our poll on a poll match on the community tab where 69% of you... <laughs> 69. I've gone for Raw Just Got Good Again. And I agree. I've said that every Tuesday morning I wake up thinking, is today the day that WWE start caring again? And for one week at least, they filled me with a rational hope. This wasn't a huge show stacked with surprises, but it was an incredibly solid episode of wrestling TV, with matches with stakes, great action, and hooking you into new stories. By Raw's recent standards, this episode was four out of five and arguably one of the best of the year. Bobby Lashley, the man that WWE have been protecting so much and calling the almighty one by cheating. It didn't make sense for Bobby's character, sure made Drew look rubbish, totally undermined the point of the cell, and is a terrible way to end a pay-per-view.